So just imagine this. We've been working on a website project for the last two weeks. Our talented designer created a beautiful mockup in Figma and our developers implemented it. But you know what? Our designer is not very happy because there are slight differences between his design mockup and the final website like spacings and sizes. And being obsessed with pixel perfection, our designer had no choice but to manually compare the developed website with his mockup and identify each tiny little differences here and there. So the developer went back to work and made some changes, but again some details were left out and Honestly, can we blame him? Because unless you have an eye for design, it can be difficult to follow complex and detailed pixel perfect requests. So I wondered, is there a better way to do this? Is there a way to make designers and developers lives easier? And you know what? I found a solution. Hello, I'm Kay from the Astro team and today let me introduce a time saver for your future web development projects and it's as simple as ABC. And it's as simple as ABC because we'll be using three different resources. A, our website version number one. B, our new design mockup iteration, so that's an image. And C, our website version number two, once we've implemented the changes. So this is resource A, so this is our website version one. And this is resource B, so it's our new design mockup iteration, so that's an image. And today I'm going to show you how you can go from A to B with a simple extension in your browser. A to B. Okay, so first you want to use the Chrome browser or you can use the Brave browser and then go to Google and type Perfect Pixel by Well Done extension. Next, click on this link and then click on Add to Chrome. Click on Add Extension and there you go, Perfect Pixel by Well Done Code has been added to Chrome. So now if you want to open Perfect Pixel, all you have to do is look in the top right corner of your browser, click on the little puzzle icon and then click on Perfect Pixel. So this is our website version number one and this is the new design mockup iteration that we received from our web designer and we need to implement the changes. Now, whether we exported that mockup image from Figma, Adobe XD, Sketch, Affinity Designer, or any other tool, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that we have an image that we can overlay on top of our website here. And this is what the Perfect Pixel extension does. So what I've done is I duplicated website version one, and what you're looking at is an exact clone, but it's website version number two. So I've opened the Perfect Pixel extension, First of all, I'm going to click on this button that says add your first layer. Then I'm going to select my mockup. So that's an image. Okay, and now you can see the image overlaid on top of our website. So you have a slider here in the interface. So as a slide, I can change the opacity. So that's my website. And then when I go to the right to 100%, this is the image I just uploaded and I can see the differences right away. Now here on top of the window, you can see an eye icon. If I click on it, I can toggle the overlay on and off. Next, we have a padlock if you want to lock the elements into place. And then the third icon is the inverted colors icon. So as I click on it, as you can see now, our image has inverted colors. And for me, this is way easier to use than the regular color, but it may be different for you. So here for me, it's very easy because now I have the website and I know that's this color and then the inverted color, I know right away, okay, this is my image. So if I put it in the middle, it's easier for me to know what's going on. Now you can add several layers, but that wouldn't really make sense here. So I'm going to leave it like this. Okay. So the next step, I'm just going to toggle off the image and I'm going to select my title here because let me toggle it back on. As I go between the two versions, I can see right away that the title is different right here. And then if I look at the rest of the mockup, I can see that there's a change with this block here. So in the new iteration, the block seems to be higher up. Okay, so let me start with the title. So first of all, I'm going to toggle the overlay off and then here I'm going to right click and click on inspect. And as I mentioned, I'm in the Chrome browser. So next I'm going to try to select here where is my H1 title and I can see it on the right hand side. 
Next, I'm going to click on the plus sign to add a new rule because I want to change the font size. The initial font size was 90 pixels. Now, how do I know this? Well, obviously, if you're the developer, you should know the initial font size. But if you forgot and want to be sure, just go back to the WordPress admin. And here we are using one of the starter templates with the Spectra page builder. So with our title selected, we go on the right hand side in the right panel. We click on style, then click on typography. And as you can see here, the pixel size is 90 pixels for this title. So let's go back. And this is how you know the initial size that we've put here in this rule. Okay, next we want to toggle the overlay back on and we want to drag the opacity slider to see the differences. And we can see that now that we open the Chrome Inspector window here, nothing is aligned anymore. And that allows me to introduce some additional controls here in the Perfect Pixel extension window. So I can click on the little arrows to just shift the overlay, but that could take some time. Or I can use keyboard shortcuts. And if you're interested in the shortcuts, you can click on the link in the top of the window. And here are some of the shortcuts. So let me go back. So now what I can do is hit the shift key and then the left key and I can go way faster because instead of going pixel by pixel, I can go 10 pixels by 10 pixels. And then I can fine tune pixel by pixel. So what I'm trying to do is align with the logo on top because the logo doesn't change. Okay, so this is good. So I've changed both axes, but I can also play with the values here. And this is the scale, but let me put it back to 0 0.5. Okay, so now that we have our overlay and everything is in place, let's click one more time on our H1 class. And if you remember here, we added a rule. So we set it to 90 pixels, which was the initial pixel size. But now let's play with it. So obviously it looks smaller. So here, in the inspector window, I'm just playing with the values with the keyboard keys. Okay, I'm going down and it looks like it's 70 pixels because it matches perfectly. And now let me use the opacity slider and I go from one to the other and it looks perfect. Great. So let me go back in WordPress and I'm going to change this to 70 pixels, but I'm not going to save my work yet. Let's go back. Now, the second thing we want to change is this block here that initially we identified was the other change in this mockup. So we're going to use the same technique. So first of all, let me toggle the overlay off and I need to identify where this block is in the code. So once again, I right click, click on inspect, hover over the various HTML elements to spot the block I want to change. So this is this block. So before I add the rule, let me go back to WordPress and let me click on this block. So here it's a container. And if you want to be sure, you can click on the little list view icon. And this is the one I want because it's one container englobing two containers here. Okay, so next I'm going to go to style. And once again, I'm using the Spectra free page builder. So next, let me click on spacing. And here I can see in the margin that there's a minus 100 pixels margin. So let me go back. And with my class selected in the inspector, I'm going to click on the plus sign to add a new rule. And if you're familiar with the inspector, you know that all the changes we make are not persistent. It's just while we editing. And I'm going to set the default value that we just saw. So minus 100 pixels. And I'm going to add an important rule to make sure my changes are reflected. Okay, so let me toggle the overlay back. And then let me go back to my value and I'm going to start playing with the value. So here it's on top. So 125, 130, no, I still need to go. Okay, so it looks like it's 160 pixels and now it looks good. And now if I play with the opacity slider, as you can see, we move the elements where they need to be. And we know exactly which values we need to implement. Now, if we close the Chrome inspector, as you can see, everything looks messed up because we had to change some horizontal values because we had the Chrome inspector window. But we can just click on reset. 
and if I refresh the page, we're back to square one because remember, the changes we made in the inspector were just to see the values. But now if I go back to WordPress, first of all, let me change the value. So we want 160 pixels because this is what we saw was the exact position with the inspector tools. And next, let me click on update. And now if we go back and refresh, and if we start playing with the opacity slider, you can see that it's exactly a match. And if I use the inverted color, it definitely shows perfect match. So as you can see in just a few minutes, and actually it's a few minutes because I'm demonstrating the whole thing, but it could be just a few seconds if you're a seasoned developer. With this extension, you can quickly go from spotting the differences to implementing those differences in the new website version. So we hope that you enjoy this tip and if you have ideas of other things that could help make your life easier as a website creator, please let us know in the comments. See you in the next one.